very cautious for tomorrow. Again, you don't need to trade every single day. And if you are trading tomorrow, again, maybe you know, trade quarter size, third size. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com nightly wrap-up show. I uh, hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody had a, a good day. Uh, so let's talk about the market. Let's talk about labels. Um, people always, you know, people always throw around labels. Uh, too short, too tall, too fat, too skinny. Uh, market is exactly the same way. People always, there's bullish markets, bearish markets. Sometimes a market is just a market, right? And, you know, we've been, we've been in this really great uh, bull cycle. Very, very, uh, very strong, very aggressive, but very, very linear, right? I think if, again, if you've been watching this broadcast, uh, you kind of, you kind of know what's going on right now. And sometimes the market just gets tired, right? Um, the way, and I talked about this from time to time, and I um, kind of went over this in the webinar today, you know, it's like, imagine you run a marathon, right? You run a marathon, you run 26 miles, you train for it. Um, everything is all good. You finish it, you throw your hands up, you're very excited to get the water and you're like, wow, I can't wait to rest. This is great. I accomplished it. And then if somebody tells you, hey, by the way, it's not a marathon, it's a triathlon. You know, you still have five miles of swimming and you still have like 30 miles of biking, right? A little bit of, def a little bit of depleting. It doesn't take away from what you did, but a little bit of deflated because again, you just realize, well, wait a minute, I thought I got to the to the goal line and well, there's more to go. And this is kind of what the market's been. Um, I, I think a lot of people try to uh, overthink, right? And overthink and over, contem uh, over uh, contemplate in their minds what exactly is going on. And they want to call tops and they want to call bottoms and this stock and this is this and this is that. Sometimes the market is just the market, right? The, the market's job from 9.30 in the morning to 4 o'clock uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time is just to function as an orderly area macro micro and everything in between for investors and traders to kind of, you know, dance between the lines. And hopefully if you, you know, if you are uh, kind of in the area of expertise, you kind of know what the hell you're doing. You're trying to take out more than you give back. And, you know, a lot of people look at this tape as, you know, the market is there for their entitlements. So, you know, the market has to give you something. The market needs to give you something. The market is always going to give you opportunity. As much as you think that is the case, a lot of times the market is just the market. And the market is tired uh, and the market is exhausted from a linear move. And that doesn't mean the market is, you know, waiting for this massive pullback and the market's going back underneath the 50-day moving average. Sometimes it means, you know what, it's just an average Tuesday. And you want to just label it as an average Tuesday. Uh, a lot of times people will try to t turn around and say, well, I know it's going to happen. Um, I know it's going to happen tomorrow, right? None of us do, right? And, and, and everybody who, who pretends and thinks and tries to echo the point that they know what's going to happen tomorrow, you better leverage everything you have behind that notion and go on that side of the market. Because if you don't, okay, nobody knows anything, okay? And the point is we have our due diligence, we have our sentiment, kind of we check the temperature of the sentiment, we do our research at night, we formulate a game plan, and then if we are lucky, our game plan flows uh, very, very smoothly, everything confirms and we make it to the next day, again, AKA, uh, we stay in business. And today was just one of those days that um, the stocks got, you know, were very strong at the open. Uh, the game plan was pretty aggressive at the open. And then the market got tired. And that's all it is. We don't want to use this as a label. The market just got tired. And to turn around and say, well, this is definitely the top. We're going to roll over tomorrow. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. Right. And if you've been kind of saying that for the last, you know, for the last two months since we've reclaimed the 50 day moving average, you're probably underwater and you're probably sitting behind the eight ball. Like, again, for us to try to be so arrogant and so, uh, you know, so just just so out there to think that we can predict what's going to happen tomorrow is crazy. Can we get prepared for it? Absolutely. Can we do our research with a fine tooth comb? Absolutely. Right. It, it, there's nothing more. Um, there's nothing more better than you being in control of your trading. But for an, an environment like this, that has been punishing shorts on any weakness or literally any weakness. Uh, the most important part is when things start to get, you know, a little bit heavy. And I think that's where it was today. Things started getting a little bit heavy. 
maybe too much, too soon, too fast, whatever adjective you want to use. You know, at this point, you're not starting to get to the bear case, but you are starting to get a little more defensive. You start maybe uh, from days maybe you wouldn't look at on an average day. Maybe you wouldn't look at any shorts. Maybe you start looking at some shorts. Look at Start looking at the areas of the market that, you know what, didn't participate in the last move or maybe participated two, three months ago, but just kind of just sitting in a channel and never got above water and is starting to break down. And there's a lot of stocks like that, right? Maybe they wouldn't be obvious to you, but there are a lot of names. So for example, names like an AMC. And you know, again, we've been seeing pretty aggressive put buying now for, you know, for a while now, right? Uh, and again, I, I want to, you know, I want to kind of talk about this from the most neutral point of, of view of all, okay? Um, what do they call The apes, the diamond hands, whatever they call them, right? It's not to offend you. It's not to offend the short sellers. We're kind of just kind of look at the chart, right? Kind of look at the chart for what it is. The movie business, it is what it is, right? Disney came out with great numbers, uh, 80 million domestically. Only 20 million came out of it on the movie theaters. Are movie, movie theaters the future? Probably not, right? We all know this. You can say what you want. The movie theater is not the future. Now our job is to look at this thing from a totally unbiased pure technical point of view, right? This is the lowest close in this whole formation. Everybody see that, right? This is the literally the lowest close in this whole formation here. 3760 was the low here, and this is literally the lowest close and it's traded right above, excuse me, right below this channel here. And we started watching today, uh, you started seeing really, really aggressive uh, put buying coming in in the 35 weeklies, in the 30 weeklies, in the September, uh, also 30 weekly puts. They're coming in pretty aggressively from a non-biased point of view. And again, I will be you know, definitely, definitely looking at this thing tomorrow. If this thing confirms this whole channel here, you know, there's a lot of room down. Say what you want. I, I understand people are very, very emotional about this thing. Say what you want. Technical analysis is the only thing that matters. So if I'm wrong and this thing gaps up tomorrow three, four dollars, what's the difference, right? What's the difference? Who cares about being right or wrong? The point is when you put your money on the line, you better believe that technical analysis needs to be behind your back. And if this whole channel starts, you know, really starts getting penetrated and they start building below this channel, well, then this thing loses the 50 day moving average and then you have a lot of room down. Same thing with a stock uh, like GameStop. And you'll, and you'll see again, GameStop, it's a, they did a phenomenal job of staying up as long as possible. Stock went to 300. The stock is still at, at, you know, at 180. But now again, you're starting to look at ranges, right? And you can see here, it held this whole range here several times, right? It held the whole range here several times. And the same thing as AMC. And again, one, you know, is not, you know, not, not really the same as the other. But again, it's kind of tied into this whole, you know, ape, shmape, schmuck, whatever the hell they call themselves. And if this thing starts losing the bottom of the channel here, again, there's a lot of room down as well. So from a non-biased point of view, and if you believe in the theory that stocks trade from supply to supply to demand to demand, then those levels that we just talked about here, you have to pay attention to, especially if you are uh, a bull and you're, you're sitting there helpless and you're kind of wondering and hoping, are these stocks going to recover? Are they going to go higher? Maybe they will, maybe they won't. We don't, we don't know, right? But the one thing that we do know is tomorrow morning, you're probably going to have a definitive answer from order flow, right? From order flow, not only in the options market, but from the equities market as well. And if one group sees control of the bottom of the range or holds the bottom of the range, then that's probably going to be the short term bottom and they could bounce or the short term area where the new leg down is going to form. And based on the option activity that we saw now for the last two, three days, especially uh, in a name like AMC, again, gun to my head. And again, there is no gun to my head, but gun to my head, if this range starts falling to the downside, you're going to have a lot more room down. And again, if you look at a lot of the other names, uh, especially the NASDAQ names that had big, you know, had big runs, uh, is it possible they finally get a rest? Right, sure, I, I think so, right? I mean, if you look at a name uh, like a Roku, right? Roku's just holding on to the five-day moving average. Again, nobody's calling for destruction of equity prices, but again, if this channel here, and if you look at the 60-minute, right? If this whole channel here confirms, can it get a move down to, you know, 411, 412? Sure, why not? If you look at Zoom, right? Look at Zoom. Zoom is holding on to this to this rising support now for four days in a row. It's held this rising support. Look at the 60 minute. If this thing starts losing this whole rising support, why can't Zoom uh, come in for a pretty good trade? Again, it, there's a difference between being a perma bear and saying, you know, everything's going to zero. The country is going to zero. Everybody's going to zero. Blah, 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 blah. Everybody dies, right? 
Again, you could trade both sides of the market. You could still be friends with bulls. You could still be friends with bears. Technical analysis doesn't have any friends. Technical analysis is pretty cut and dry. There is no uh, gray area here. Either bulls uh, clean up supply and stocks go higher or bears clean up demand and stocks go lower. And I think going into tomorrow's session based on how just call it tired, right? Again, without the whole labels, just call the market tired. I think you have to have, you know, both sides of the market to be prepared for. Okay. Are there uh, some longs that look pretty interesting? Yeah, there's some longs. I, you know, I still kind of like this checkpoint uh, held up pretty well. Maybe finally wakes up tomorrow after the big run uh, on Friday. It's kind of going sideways a little bit. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Maybe a name like, uh, uh, FISV, right? It's coming out of the bottom channel. If it confirms, maybe you know, maybe it gives another two, three dollars to the upside. But there's a lot of names tired as well. Okay, Tesla had a nice run today off the bottom channel, red to green, continuation of yesterday's move. But it, but again, look at Tesla, right? You're talking about Tesla had a run from 620 to 694, right? 6, uh, 620 to 694 in three days. It needs to rest, right? Nobody says it's going back to 500, 300, 200. Tesla Q. Nope. Nobody's saying any of that. The point is the stock is tired. Look at the NASDAQ 100 as a whole. The Qs just ran from 354 to three, almost 366. You're talking about 11, 12 point move in four days. That's a lot, right? Again, the whole theory of marathon, I finished the marathon. Well, wait a minute, it's a triathlon. You still have two stages left. Stocks don't go straight down. Stocks don't go straight up. There's a process of rest. There's a process of consolidation. And maybe tomorrow's session is not one of the the greatest sessions of all time because again stocks are tired doesn't mean they're going to get imp they're going to implode right and stocks that you know are st still sitting there doesn't mean they're going to explode but they might be tired and what tired means are smaller uh, channels right they they might start to contract even more okay and you might have a another day maybe a two day cycle that the market just rests maybe it goes up maybe it goes down maybe it goes absolute sideways but this is where being a trader for a very, very long time, and some of you guys are only trading for a year, two years, three years, you don't know the difference between going aggressive and macro channels confirmation, then market being very, very tired. And again, the same day does not exist. Okay. Uh, as we say all the time, one day you can have like a Jacob deGrom come out there and pitch, you know, nine innings, give up zero runs. And the next day they throw out some other pitcher and he gives up seven runs in an inning and a third. Uh, every single day is, is different. Momentum is only as good as the average true range. And based on what we're seeing here, again, is it possible we could have a res day? Absolutely. Um, I am definitely prepared for at least the day that potentially, I'm gonna watch the opening range lows. If, if, if some of these opening range lows start to confirm, I do believe there'll be some channels to the downside uh, that we could take advantage of, you know, like a Zoom, right? Like a Zoom, for example, uh, obviously like an AMC, obviously like a GME, uh, you know, even a name like Splunk, right? Even a name like Splunk really hasn't rallied, uh, you know, had a big, big run. And that's just kind of holding on to its channel as well. Um, so I think tomorrow you have to be flexible. Um, I think tomorrow it's very, very important. Be open-minded. Like I say all the time, especially in the webinar, you don't need to trade every day. You, you definitely don't need to trade every day aggressively. Not every single day is going to be uh, in your sweet spot, okay? And it's very, very important to kind of identify what type of day it is going to be before it happens. So going into tomorrow, I'm not going to be shocked if we have a slower day, if channels are slower and it feels like it's two o'clock in the afternoon when it's only 11 o'clock in the morning. I get it, right? I, you know, this isn't my first rodeo. I've seen what happens. But if you're a new trader, nobody sits down to you, sits down with you and tries to explain, hey, by the way, you can't drive your vehicle one speed every single day. That's when you start to turn around and believe that every single day is equally uh, advantageous and you're going to find out very, very quickly you're wrong. And all those little paper cuts, right, that you should be getting or trying to avoid, then they start turning into a severed head because you're trading a 2-7 offsuit the same way you'd be trading uh, a pair of aces if you got dealt that way. So be very cautious for tomorrow. Again, you don't need to trade every single day. And if you are trading tomorrow, again, maybe you know, trade quarter size, third size, wait for channel expansion, right? Isn't that the name of the game? Wait for aces, wait for kings, wait for queens, wait for jacks. Don't trade the 2 7 lawsuit. And if you are, don't trade it with any meaningful size because, again, this whole point of this business is stay around for the premium hands. And if you do your research and look at a lot of charts, you're not going to, it's going to be very, very tough for you to find 
a lot of great value long charts, especially with a, with a potential uh, rest, right? Rest, uh, exhaustion, whatever you want to call it. And again, there's not a lot of stocks that have been showing technical damage because again, the market's been up uh, since May 20. So be very, very careful. So uh, let's talk about today's pivots. Um, again, everything basically happened off the open today. Uh, CPI came out this morning. Uh, I said, keep in mind, look, uh, the market's been on a linear run since May 20, despite the bulls holding last week. It doesn't mean they will hold today. Again, look at the scoreboard. Let's see what happened at the end of the day. Market doesn't need a reason to pull. Stay away from any overextended names. And again, if you look at over the extended names, they're the ones that got pulled first. Uh, nice move here. Uh, nice move here on uh, Tesla. There's actually a red to green scenario up above here that we'll talk about in a second. Big move yesterday from that. Uh, 666 level. It traded all the way up into uh, the 795s this morning. Great job there. It also gave us uh, a chance on the bottom channel to go in red to green for another seven, eight points. And then the market just kind of died here. Uh, snow, really nice move on snow. Uh, 270, 272. We talked about snow yesterday for a resumption day. It's exactly what happened today. Uh, rested yesterday after a big move. 270, 272 big spots. Here was snow, right? Here was snow. It took out the 270, took out the 272 and traded right to the linear regression line that we spoke about last night in the video uh, to 275. It's going to need to reclaim 275 uh, in the future to go uh, higher, but nice move there. Uh, checkpoint I still like for the next couple of days. I'm still watching that. Uh, Disney 85 woke up on that CNBC report. Not a big move at all. Uh, Disney only ran up like 60 cents or so. It took out 85 and traded up to 85.60s before it reversed. Uh, with the rest of the market. Uh, PDD got a little bit of strength with the China names. Uh, here is PDD off that 1175, right? Off the 1175, 12 area. Almost went to 15, actually a nice little move. Again, this is my point, guys. Watch for charts that are coming off the bottom, not off the top. Uh, there's a lot more meat on that bone. Uh, Bill, I still like, never got to the 86 level. CCIV never got to the 2750 level. Uh, Tesla, again, for aggressive traders, only red to green with a 682 stop. It went red to green, traded all the way up to uh, 693. So big $7 push uh, right into supply. Good job for you guys that took it as well. Um, you know, Snow, take on the way up. Overstock, nice move there. Rejected 98 yesterday, needs to build. 101 will be the next area. Nice move on overstock. Here is overstock, right? So it took out the 98, took out the 101, and went all the way up to 102.75 before it reversed. Uh, Amazon, 36.60. Not a big move at all. 36.60, traded up to uh, 36.75, and then really got hit along with everything else. Overstock, take on the way up, 101. Uh, Netflix never gate, never reclaimed that 545.30 second entry. And here's my notes, right? Here's my notes on AMC. Buyers continue to come in for the 38. Uh, 35 and September puts any close below 38.75. We'll start the next leg down. Let's definitely watch that opening range lows tomorrow. It could get hit very aggressively. So again, guys, learn how to kind of shift speeds, uh, identify what potentially could happen the next business day, and the most important part, folks, stay in business. Guys, have a great night. I'll see a lot of you guys tomorrow.